So, you know, right now, you know, this is real nostalgic because when you think of Watts, you know, so many people connect Watts to struggle. Struggle is um, necessary, however, Watts is uh, more than struggle. We have to reimagine that narrative because all of these people that's on the walls, the Black Panthers, like all of the people that has stood through um, the energy of racism. You know, you look at some of these things and you just be like blown away, like, wow, this is what our ancestors had to go through, you know. Darky toothpaste, for real, they got toothpaste? It said darky toothpaste, it's just so much, it's just a desecration of our culture, you know. Um, sad, real sad. Little African, ain't nothing about this African, nothing but little African. And we're talking about a mis cultural misappropriation <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it at its finest. You know, you could just walk through here and you can deal with how uh, culture has been appropriated. You know, snake eyes, for real. This is what they're going to put up. Please let me sleep. I've got chicken on the brain. Like, you know, and it's just really sad to just really see, even in 2020, you know, racism still exists and a lot of the old white racist rhetoric is still here. The sentiments are still here. It's changed a lot, but like I say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And in Watts, I just really look for the day for Watts to um, be producing work and to be re reimagining our narrative through our own work, through our own art, through our own literature. You know, when you deal with culture, you deal with a people um, that's coming together under a common set of morals, under a defined, a self-defined identity, under producing their own work. You know, Watts been doing this for so long, but the problem has been that outside interest has come in and taken our work and then used it to however they um, would like to use it. So I feel that it's time for us to have a voice in the conversation of our work, a voice in the conversation of our history. Because history is not just what happened yesterday or 100 years ago. History is what's happening right now. And we can change the history in Watts, Honor King, and Racism, Union, Justice Now. Honor King and racism. Yeah, Dr. King, a giant, a straight giant. You know, a lot of people uh, want to add, you know, unfavorable things about Dr. King, but for me, he was a straight giant, you know, and you cannot taint that man's legacy because he produced so much work in such a short period of time that we're still standing on today, you know. But right now, I feel who's suffering the most in Watts are the youth, you know, the young people. The young people have no connection to, um, you know, the old Watts, meaning the Watts where you would walk down the street and you would hear someone playing a, a bass guitar. You would go down another street, you would hear, you know, a church choir um, in somebody's yard just practicing. You go down another street and you hear someone playing the drums. Like the young people, they do not know this level of art and culture than slavery. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I could go on and on about slavery. And it's interesting, when you're dealing with, um, quote unquote, 1865, you know, when we exploded out of the South, when we were, quote unquote, free, you have to deal with, many of us went up north to New York because a lot of things was going up on up there. Marcus Garvey had the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association. You know, that was right after the war again. So it was a lot of soldiers returning from the war. And then you had the Harlem Renaissance. 
That's very important to note because when you're dealing with the Harlem Renaissance after the turn of the century, you had um, Langston Hughes, you had all of these great, um, Claude McKay, all of these great writers, all of these great poets, they were right up there in Harlem. Zora Neale Hurston, you know, but the connection to Watts is after the turn of the century, we went to Tulsa, Oklahoma as well thriving over there and then we came all the way over to Watts Central Avenue and one of the um, giants of the Harlem Renaissance grew up in Watts. His name was Arnabon Timps, legendary poet, legendary writer. He befriended Langston Hughes and that's that Watts Harlem connection. So why is that important? Because we're still standing, me as a writer, um, because of that connection because of the things that I know. And back to the youth, if I'm not able to make that connection, they will not know. Racism is just such a, such a bad thing. And a, and a lot of white people, they feel like, um, what can we do? Um, because we don't want to live in the energy of guilt. No, we can't tell y'all what to do. And that's the thing about racism. We cannot go into these white huddles and tell them what to do. You all have to figure that out on your own. You know, it's not our job to tell you all what to do about racism, what to do about police brutality, what to do about all of this. This is still in the media today. You, you look at Hollywood, it's very important to see when the credits roll, you'll see who's in control. And it's not us. It's not black and brown people at all. What's interesting is that I was watching a, a movie, um, it was a Nigerian movie, and for the first time, <laughs> for the first time, this was recently, I saw a movie where all the credits was of black people, was of African people. It blew me away. It was an aha moment, like, wow. You know, so if we're not controlling our narrative, we will, we must relive all of this again. We must. They all say, Plymouth is the 1940 beauty, you know, and America's excited over the luxury ride. And they always just shove stuff down our throat. You know, look, Sunday Sentinel. You know, you see the Pullman Porter just trying to do his job and help him, and he about to whack him with his umbrella. Like, for real? Like, October 14th. 1907, or that 19, 1917, excuse me. Just so much, man. But with that being said, you know, my wife always say, history will repeat itself until a lesson is learned. I'm going to say that again. History will repeat itself until a lesson is learned. And once we learn the lesson, we could change history. So I feel that's what we're doing right now. You know, that's the reason why I felt the need to write the book, Watts Conception and Misconception, The Hub of the Universe Explored by One of Watts' Native Son, and that's me. So I deal with, I deal with Watts. And it's not just a book, it is a bookumentary. So it will be out next year, 2021 fall of 2021. I'm excited. I'm really excited for this work because it will chronicle a lot of things that's been going on, not only in Watts, but in inner cities like Watts across the country. So stay tuned for that, Watts Conception and Misconception, where I deal with the conception of Watts and a lot of the misconceptions. You know, people only think Watts is known for gang banging, drug dealing, killing, it's so much more to watch than that. I know. Yeah, I had 30 friends murdered before I graduated high school. Yeah, I probably had another 50 friends murdered after I got out of high school. But it's still so much more to watch than that. You know, I have 30 friends that then wrote books. <laughs> I have over 50 friends that are entrepreneurs and that are doing great work and that are teaching artists. I have over probably a hundred friends that go all over the world um, presenting their art. So, and many of them are from Watts. So let's change the narrative and let's not subscribe to what they tell us 
we are. Because we are not picking ninnies. Hmm. Wow. Wow, that's deep right there. Um, one of the things that must change in Watts, I feel, is that our um, production of music, of art, even of literature, because right now it's suffering. You know, Watts has always been ahead of the curve when it came to producing great art, great music, great literature. But right now I have a five-year-old daughter, and um, it's I don't know um, too many artists that's out of watch that I can allow her to listen to musically. And that's a shame. That's really a shame. Why? It's because we are much more than um, that low vibration of music that we've been producing. And a lot of, and some of these people are my little homeboys. You know, I'm generations removed from that, but still, people, we need more Watts authors. We need more Watts businessmen. We need more Watts artists. We need more Watts mothers and fathers. We need the Watts community to stand up and to love on each other. Simple as that. Like, love on each other. It don't matter if you're black, brown, white, blue, green, whatever you are. If you love Watts like we love Watts, love would be the only thing that get us to the other side. Someone tell me something else. I would sit down and gainfully argue, nope, only love. That's the only thing that would get us to the other side. So that's where we are. And we've always welcomed everybody into our community. And that's the thing. Like, that's what happened in Africa. We welcome everybody into the community, and then, you know, they turn on us. Same thing with Watts. We've always welcomed everybody into the community. And it has came to um, bite us, bite us real hard. So that's my time. Peace. <laughs>